What's up everybody? So in this video, we're gonna be talking about each and everything that you need to know for D2.2 gene expression. Now, before we start, go catch yourself a membership at teachme.org to get access to tons of IB style questions that will help you prepare for your mock exams and your final exams. Also here you can get beautiful notes tailored for the IB specifically. Now without further ado, let's get started with this video. For this video to make sense, we need to understand the following concept clearly. To make a baby, right, you need two parents, a, a, a father and a mother, right? Because the father is gonna make a special cell called the sperm cell. Now this little cell is really unique because it carries half the DNA from the father. Now the female does a similar thing, but instead of a sperm cell, she's gonna make an egg cell. And the egg cell is special because it carries half the DNA from the mother. Now when these two, the sperm and the egg come together, we call that fertilization, right? And that forms a very special cell called the zygote. This zygote is your very, very first cell. This cell contains the DNA from both the sperm and the egg. So therefore, it contains the DNA from both the father and the mother, right? That's very, very cool. And this is your very first cell. Your whole body, the entire baby, will form from this single cell. Now, what happens? This zygote will start dividing by mitosis, right? It's gonna divide, now there's two cells. Then it's gonna divide some more, now there's four cells. And it's gonna keep duplicating and duplicating um, until eventually it's the full baby. Now what I wanna point out is after a few duplications, so when it's when the baby has like 100 cells, okay? At this point, the structure looks vaguely like this. Now remember this, it's very important. All of these cells have the same DNA, right? Because they all come from the same zygote, the very same first cell. So they all carry the same DNA, the same DNA. But scientists have found something super, super interesting. They've decided, they've noticed a pattern that these cells here, all of these on the top layer, become certain parts of the baby and these here become other parts of the baby. And then this layer here becomes other parts of the baby. They've noticed a pattern. And let me show you. Let's look at this. So here's that very special um, structure. The top layer, okay, this, they, the scientists gave a name. And they call this the ectoderm. So after the zygote divided a bunch of times and we have a whole horse load of cells here, the top layer here is called the ectoderm. And scientists have noticed that these cells here will all specialize and differentiate to becoming structures related to the skin and the brain, okay? And then they noticed that this middle layer here, by the way, called the mesoderm, this layer here will differentiate and specialize into all the structures related to the musculoskeletal system, so the bones and the muscles, but also the circulatory system, like your heart, the vessels, things like that. And then this last layer here, the third layer, this one called the endoderm, will become related, um, will specialize and differentiate into structures related to your respiratory system or your digestive system. Now, I gotta ask you, how is this possible? I, you, you just told me, my guy, that all of these cells have the same instruction manual, the exact same DNA. So why would this cell here decide to become a nerve cell, whereas this one down here decide to become a, a lung cell? They have the same DNA, the same instruction manual, so why would they differentiate or specialize into different cells? That is a very important question, and that's exactly what we're gonna talk about in this video. Gene expression. We're gonna see exactly how, despite all these cells having the exact same DNA, how they become different specialized cells. Now, we're gonna talk about that soon. Now, what is this process called? When we form all of these specialized organs and structures from a single zygote, we call this epigenesis. So this is just a little vocab word you guys should know. So I have it defined up here for you as well. Epigenesis, the process that results in the formation of organs and specialized tissue from a single undifferentiated cell, the zygote, the one, the very first cell. That's epigenesis, okay? That's just little words you need to know. So now let's move on to the next stuff. Now, what exactly is gene expression? The very title of this video. Well, we're gonna read a sentence and then I'm gonna explain it using this diagram and hopefully you get it by then. So gene expression is the process of reading a gene and building the protein that that gene is asking for. Okay, that's all that gene expression is. So let me, let me show you what I mean. Here we have a cell. 
we know each of our cells have a nucleus that contains all of our DNA, right? All of our instruction manual is in our DNA. Now, at this moment, this cell wants to make a protein, okay? So you need to understand what a gene is first. So you know our DNA is very long. This instruction manual is so long. Now, a different, one specific segment of our DNA is called a gene. So maybe this segment here is a gene that codes for trait one. Maybe this um, segment right here is a gene that codes for another trait. And this segment right here, this gene, codes for another trait. So a, um, one segment of our DNA is called a gene, and each gene codes for a different protein. Now, let's say at this moment, this cell wants to express this gene. So it wants to express, it wants to do exactly what this small segment of DNA is asking for, what this gene is asking for. To do so, two steps need to happen, transcription and translation. Transcription, by the way, we cover these two in tremendous detail in their own chapter. Uh, I forgot what the chapter was, but just know the names for this video. Now, transcription is the process by where we photocopy this gene that we want to um, read and make a protein of, right? So that's transcription. So photocopy into mRNA. So this is now the photocopy. Now that we have the photocopy, um, the instruction manual here, now we just got to read it and build the protein that it's asking for. And that happens during translation, all right? So a different gene will result in a different protein. So a different G if you express this gene, then you'll have this protein. If you express this gene, you'll have another protein. And each protein has a different function because they have a different structure. And we need our different proteins at different times, right? That's the deal. That's what gene expression is. Read it again. The process of reading a gene and building the protein that is that is asking for, that can be used by that organism. Now, remember how I said, all the cells of our body have the same DNA, right? But the different cells of our body will read a different part of our DNA. So coming back to here, remember these cells here, they will read the part of our instruction manual, our DNA, that makes them a brain cell or that makes them a skin cell. These guys will read a part of our DNA that makes them a lung cell or that makes them a liver cell. These guys here will read a part of our DNA that makes them a muscle cell, right? So each of the cells in our body will only follow or listen to one part of the instruction manual. All our different cells will only express the genes that make them the cell they need to be. They will ignore all of the other DNA, um, all of the other DNA, all of the other genes. So as a little example, let me show you what I mean. Let's take this little guy. He's hungry, okay? He wants to eat food. He likes chicken. If you know him from Barnyard, you know he just loves chicken. So he will absolutely die if he can't get chicken. So let's say we're gonna use an example here. Let's say this cell is a pancreatic cell. Okay, we're just using a random cell example here. So these cells make up our pancreas. And one very important function of our pancreatic cells is to make um, the, pro uh, the protein insulin. So they need to express the gene of insulin. They need to express the insulin gene to make the, uh, the insulin um, protein to be able to do their job properly. Because insulin is very important in um, allowing our cells to use glucose. So after this guy eats a massive meal, his cells are gonna be like, mm -mm -mm, I just ate a nice chicken, now I need to make insulin, and, it's gonna, and then the pancreas cells will start making insulin, do gene expression to make insulin, so that insulin can now be used by the body to help the cells take all that glucose, that, that all the fresh glucose that it now ingested, so that the cells can use it to make ATP and energy and survive and stuff like that. So that's just one example. Because, for example, the lung cell will not express the insulin gene. It's not its job. The lung cell will express another part of, um, of, the, of the DNA to do its own job. Okay, that's the big picture here. Now, there are a few words you guys really need to know now that you understand gene expression. Genome. Okay, I'm just going to reveal them real quick. And I want you to understand that, remember, all of the cells in our body have the same genome. They all have the same DNA. But... All of the cells in our body have a different transcriptome because although all the cells in our body have the same genome, the same DNA, they only read and, and express some genes of that entire genome. That means this cell, a pancreatic cell, will have a different transcriptome, the amount of MR, the MRA, mRNA that it makes, compared to a muscle cell because a muscle cell will make other kinds of mRNA. Okay, and it's the same goes for proteome. Different cells will have a different proteome. Um, okay, so although, again, last time, all cells have the same genome, 
but different cells read different parts of the genome, so different cells will have different transcriptome and different proteome, all right? So let me reveal what I just said there, because I know you guys I need to drill this stuff into your head, guys. Okay, now, two more keywords, but I want you to look at these guys first, look at them. Aren't they all just beautiful? Yes, they're famous, uh, we don't just envy them totally, but look what's so important here. They're all so different. They're all people, all humans, all homo sapiens, but they're different. Look, the rock here is bold. I would love to be bold, but he's buff. Okay, she um, is Asian, right? She has dark hair. She's absolutely jacked. Uh, he is Filipino, so he's a bit darker skinned. The complexion is different. Uh, he may have freckles. She may be blonde. I know she's not really blonde, but you know what I mean? So they all have different external features. Okay, all different external features, but not only that, they have different internal features. So don't only get stuck on the external appearance. They are all different. Maybe he has blood type A and she has blood type um, O or whatever. And amongst many other things that can be different inside of them internally uh, because of their genes. Now, two words you need to know. First one is genotype. So genotype is the type of um, genetic information that you have. Me and you, me, you, me, you and the rock, me, you and uh, the um, Mr. Beast, we all have different genotypes, okay? We have different versions of our genetic information. And because we have different versions of our genetic information, when we express our genes through gene expression, basically making all these proteins that we need, we will have a different physical appearance. We, have, we'll, we will have different traits, both um, externally and internally. And we call these external and internal traits our phenotype. So because we all have different genotypes, because we have different genotypes, genetic information, when gene expression happens, when we grow up and develop, we will all have clear different phenotypes, the set of observable traits that we have both outside and inside. Okay, so bear all this stuff in mind. All this stuff's really important, trust me, okay? I'm not just saying it to entertain you guys. Okay, now, now going forward from this, now that we know what gene expression is, we're gonna now talk about two ways in which gene expression is controlled. Because think about it, this guy, he doesn't wanna, the pancreatic cell is not gonna make insulin all day just because it wants to. No, it's not. It's gonna make it only when it needs to, only when this guy is eating his chicken, not when he's sleeping, not when he's um, not eating. It's only gonna make it at specific times. So there are ways to control gene expression so that it just doesn't happen all the time, only at certain times when it's needed. And gene expression can be controlled at both of these stages, transcription and translation. And we're gonna see that right now. So we're gonna see first how regulation happens during transcription. So this part here where we read that specific gene we want to make and make a copy into mRNA, okay? We're gonna talk about how regulation happens here. Now, bear in mind, this process applies to eukaryotes. Remember, prokaryotic cells do not have a nucleus, only eukaryotic cells. So this is exclusively what I'm talking about right now for cells like me and you and the tree outside, all eukaryotic cells. For access to our full-length premium videos and so much more, head over to teachme.org now.